of your son. Grant that all who eat and drink at this holy table may be fed and refreshed by his flesh and blood. Be forgiven for their sins, united with one another, and strengthened for all your service. True Jesus is our Lord. Of the work and 
dedication to the glory of God. And we are now performing the voluntary withdrawal of the services of the Lord of your now Professor Adam O. A. Oloka on the 30th day of November 2014, the Reverend Canon Dr. P. O. Lucas, who has been an assistant priest in the chapel as Supreme Office as the acting chaplain coming between the 4th of December 2014 to July 15, 2018, during which period the structure of the church was also built. Getting up to the roofing level with the Venerable Dr. Now, the Right Reverend Dr. C.O. Adabada, then acting in charge of Convocation of Churches, supervising the project of Intercourse. And we are now proposed adoption of office as the priest in charge of this chapel on the 16th day of July 2018. The Venerable Dr. and Mrs. S.N. Mabarita took over the project from the roofing stage. And ensure its completion while it is highly commended by the entire Council of the Bible for ensuring that the present chapel is ready for dedication to be. With the fixing of the COVID 19, including the aluminium windows, the church gave the ceiling through the donation of 1 million naira by Joseph Foundation in Lagos, tiling of the floor by Professor Ola Pati, Ola Opa, plastering and the education of the sanctuary through the road made available. By Mrs. Adil of Bumi and Mr. Bukut among others. While we also played on record the contribution and support received from the Venerable people at the Madrid, the Attitude of the Convocation of Churches, and especially for its effective supervision as well. And we are the most the donations received by the church from the Gospel of the Bible, not only as the King, Professor Yvette de Bokari, Mr. Ivor of the Wallace. Great white president of the law at our family, mother's union of formulation of churches, also from Holy Jaguar, the chapel of resurrection, children of our head home of our church, and chief of the family are also noted and appreciated. And we're the airport and support received from the members of the congregation and priests who served at various times at this sanctuary. I well noted appreciation with prayer wishes of continued abundant God blessings of them and their families in the next name of Jesus. And we are the construction of our Savior's chapter 90 in the Fourth Bible. We now completed, fully furnished, free from legal abilities and debt, and is now ready for dedication. And we are a petition has been presented to a grave by the Venerable people at the money, the Archdeacon of Convocation of Churches. That you will be pleased to dedicate this sanctuary as a Savior's chapel at IIT in the Bible Divide. Today, the 14th day of July, in the year of our Lord 2019. Now, therefore, he, Joseph, will have to be a few members by the time of the Lord will show the Bible the Diocese and the Grand Communion, through the virtue of the authority of the Episcopal and Conference of the Family of Part of Him, to dedicate said our Savior's chapel at IIT in the Bible Divide. Today, and to set it apart from all to pay and common needs, and to dedicate the same to the Almighty God for the administration of laws and sacraments, and for such public worship according to the administration of the rules and ceremonies of the Church of Nigeria and the Nigerian Communion. And to set apart and dedicated forever in the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. This 14th day of July in the year of the Lord 2019 and of the 21st year of his consecration and his translation in post. Praise the Lord.
Stan, we Joseph, by divine permission, Bishop of Albany, on this 14th day of July, the year of our Lord, 2019, under God, to dedicate, set apart this building named as Savior's Church, IITA. Set it apart from all profane and unholy uses, save for the worship of the Almighty God in the name of the Father. And of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In this church, there will be membership increase. In this place, prayers will be answered. In this place, the word of God will be put with power. In this place, there will be deliverance. In this place, there will be healing. And we declare under God to pray. That everyone that comes in here in tears, in confusion, we will return him in joy. We will return him in praise. From this place, other branches will emerge. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy 
Spirit. Verse 3.
for joining Nexus. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done in this place. May your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, lighten our bodies. Amen. Speak to us. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us glad and rejoice in it. I want to give this opportunity to thank my Father and God, my mentor, my teacher, the most reverend, Dr. Joseph. I think I want to thank you so much for this opportunity. May you be serving more and more in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to use this opportunity to welcome our mama. Uh, respect your absence. I told you earlier. May the Lord continue to step in you. Amen. May we have many of such families in joy and in dancing Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. If there is anybody Commission in this diocese that is believing God for such trips, the Lord will give it to you. Amen. Those who are concerned know what I'm talking about. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Today we just want to talk briefly about the team, a call for evangelism. A call for evangelism. And our text is taken from Matthew 28. Verse 19 and 20. The gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things, whatsoever commanded you, and lo, I am with you all, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Amen. What is evangelism? Evangelism simply put is the great commission. The great commission as it is commanded in the Bible according to St. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20. It is the great commission. It is a command to make disciples of all nations for Jesus Christ. It is a command given to us for our Lord and Savior. As we go out and make disciples for him. That command is still subsidy. Evangelism is not being nice to people. It is not the mere testimony of a good and consistent life, even though it is part of it. It is not being friendly or helpful and of good neighborliness. Or any other food that you may want to show to people around you, even though those attributes are preparatory to evangelism. Evangelism, therefore, is the presentation of Jesus Christ so that men will accept him as Lord and Savior from guilt and power of sin and declare him Lord of their lives. Evangelism is the presentation of Jesus Christ so that men will accept him as Lord and Savior from guilt and power of sin and to declare him as Lord of their lives. Evangelism involves speaking it involves the world. We are to go out and preach the world. In 
our common day to day language, evangelism is to preach, to proclaim, proclaim the good tidings, to tell the good news as it was delivered by Jesus to us. It is to give good tidings. In the Bible, in the Gospel of God, chapter 2, verse 10, the angels evangelized the good tidings of the great joy. Jesus himself evangelized. He preached the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. Chapter 8, verse 1. Three evangelists. He evangelized in Acts chapter 8, verse 35. These examples from the Bible, they spoke the word. Evangelism means bringing forth the word, the good news. The good news from place to place. Evangelism is therefore the ministry of the spoken word. The ministry of the spoken word. To make known the gospel of our Jesus Christ. To make known the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, you and I, we have received the ministry of speaking. Whether you are a priest or you are a day, to not as you are a child of God, you are. You are, you, are, you are giving your life to Christ. You have received the ministry of speaking. But not just any type of speaking. Speaking good tidings. Speaking good tidings. For those of us who can talk very well, it's a ministry that God has given to you. Don't talk about anything. Talk the gospel. Talk the gospel. We are to speak. We are to go place to place. We have to go to villages. We have to go to cities. We have to go to slums. Develop places. Build up places to preach the good news. But we are so quiet. Why is the church so quiet? Why are Christians so quiet? Why are pastors quiet? Why are priests quiet? Why are members of the Anglican Communion quiet? Why are evangelists quiet? We are to speak, but we are keeping quiet. Why? Church leaders are quiet. Mothers and fathers are quiet. Why are we quiet? We are to proclaim the gospel of Christ. We are to speak the good tidings at home in the office, to your children, to your parents, to your brothers, to your sisters, you are to pick the good tidings. Why are we so quiet? Why are we so timid? Why do you find it difficult to speak the word? You have been commissioned. You say, go ye. You are to go. Go and speak the good tidings to the people who are never alive. There is need for urgent evangelism in our nation today, we need to go out and preach. Why do we need to preach? Why evangelism? Why must you speak? Why must you evangelize? Number one, it is a command of our Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20. We just read it. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He said, Tell ye in Jerusalem. And be endued with power. And ye shall be by witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, and all over the place. So witness for Christ is a command. He has given us the command. And when Jesus Christ speaks to you and gives you command, you have been empowered. You have been empowered to do. And you receive power to preach to them. Number two, reason why you must evangelize. Men are perishing. People are dying. People are dying. And they are going to hell fire. People are dying. The Inspector General of Police in June, no longer the 
January and June this year, about 1,500 people died as a result of Boko Haram activities and Fulani Hesmen crisis. When government says 1,500, you can be sure they are up to 2,000. Praise the Lord. Amen. Government officially came out and said 1,500 people died. Out of those 1,500 people, how many are Christians? How many are going to heaven? How many have been going to church without knowing Christ? We have a responsibility in our hands. 1,500. Maybe it will up to 3,000. How many of them is God welcoming to heaven? We have a work in our hands. People are perishing. People are dying. People are dying. We need to do something. We need to wake up. People are perishing. They don't have hope. Luke chapter 19 verse 10. John chapter 3 verse 36. Mark 16, 16. Luke 19, John 3, 36, Mark 16, 16. People are dying, they don't have hope. People are perishing every day. Perishing every day. If you look at our environment, a lot of things are happening. And then, it's not, uh, it's not separating you. The big man is dying. The poor man is dying. Government officials are dying. Just before the weekend, we had the sad news of the death of the daughter of Baha Pasolati, a 58-year-old woman. Just killed like that. Just like, as if she's an animal. Death will not knock your door before it comes. So we need to preach to people. We need to preach to the high, we need to preach to the low. And it's our responsibility to do it. God will not come from heaven. Jesus will not come here to do it again. Angels will not do it. It was not angels that were asked to go. It is you and I. We need to go and preach to the people. Hell is real. Hell is real. When you wake up in the morning after praising God, after appreciating God, bear in mind that hell is real. Revelation 2015. Revelation 2015. Number three, why we must evangelize? Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming too soon. Today is the day of salvation. Revelation 22, 20. Today is the day of salvation. When you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. God is calling you to salvation today. The message is urgent. We need to bring urgent message to our environment, to the people around us, to our family members, and to everybody who will listen to us. Whether they want to hear or not, we must preach it. We must preach the word. We must take people to the kingdom of God. We must take people to heaven. Number four, the harvest is ready. Harvest is ready, and therefore we must walk. The harvest is ready. John chapter 4, verse 35. The harvest is ready, and we must harvest. If not, the harvest will be rotten. If you have a farm and the crop is ripe, and you are not harvesting, it will get rotten. Our society is getting to that state. It's getting to that state. Harvest is ready. People are hungry. People are afraid. If you call them, they will listen to you. People are afraid. If you say, hey, Jesus loves you, they will respond to you because the society is bad. They are looking for people to love them. Take the message of Christ to them. They are ready to hear you now. Recently, I was driving in Lagos, and I saw a red dress man standing by the road. And something said, why don't you speak to him? Then I went there and I said, hey, how are you? He said, fine. I said, where are you going? He said, I'm not going anywhere. Something just came from my taxi. Have you been here today? 
He looked at me. He said, are you a prophet or something? I said, have you eaten today? That's not my question. He said, I had last last night. He said, come into the car. Came into the car. We took him to KFC. I ordered chicken. I ordered a fruit, a, a, a something. And uh, I ordered for myself. So we started eating. And I started talking to him. He listened to me. Ordinary short people would listen to you, except hunger mama them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> people are hungry. People are dying. People are excited. People are afraid. It is time for harvest. Even within the church, it's time for harvest. It's time for harvest. We need to go out to preach. Number five. Christ is the remedy for sin. Galatians chapter 3, verse 13. Galatians 3, 13. Christ is the remedy for sin. There is no any other name under the earth where my man can be saved. There is no any other way. Don't let anybody deceive you. Jesus Christ is the Lord. He's the only way. He's the only door through which we can get to heaven. If Jesus is the only way, where are we wasting time? Where are we delaying in preaching him to people? We need to preach him to people. We need to give Jesus to people. He is the only way. There is no any other name under the sun. We are by men shall be saved. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Lastly, reason why we must evangelize. Islam is growing at an alarming rate and they have become a problem and a threat to the world. They have become a threat to the world. We need to cut the young of them very early before they become the Boko Haram of today. Before they become the Bohanis. Before they become the Almatidis. Before they become the Mohammeds. If the present people that are threatening the nation were preached to earlier, we won't get to this stage. If you are preached to your son when he was four, when he was five, when he was nine, when he was ten, twelve, fifteen, he won't become the boy that he is in your house today. If you are preached to your sister, to your brother before now, you won't have problem with them now. We need to pray for the Muslims around us. We need to prayerfully preach to them. Islam is growing. According to the Guardian Weekly of 2018, Islam is the fastest growing religion of the world. More than twice as fast as the overall global population. As of 1900, 119 years ago, the world population of the Muslim was just 200 million. 119 years ago, the population of the whole Muslims in the world, 200 million. As of 2012, a report from the Pew Research Center, New York, indicated that Christian's population stood at 2.4 billion which is that 3% of the world, world's population. Why Islam is 1.8 billion and 24.1% and others put together stood at 45%. That is to give you the picture. If 119 years ago, 200 million, they have doubled and multiplied to 1.8 billion, if Christians were doing aggressive evangelism, we should be more than this. And mind you, the 2.4 uh, billion, the world population, does not mean that the 2.4 billion people are going to help. We have a work to do. We need to wake up. Recently, I was privileged to do a small research 
as a partial fulfillment of a degree in divinity from Emmanuel College. And I did a little research of our Sidikinries, I just took five. I took five as Sidikinries and I did proximate analysis. And the theme of the work was Evangelism and Mission, the effects on church growth in Barnardosis as a case study. Out of the five Pacific Indies, the result was not encouraging. What we witness this day is transfer of people from one church to the other, and we are rejoicing that we are growing. We are not growing. People leave this church to join this church. If I leave Abobo now and I go to Bodija and I start attending Bodija also, and they will count me as a member of also church, and they will be happy that they are increasing. They are not increasing us. When I analyze the number of new converts, that is the real growth of the church. Your grace, I will bring the report to you, sir. I don't want to mention the names of that dictionary. Only one of them except I have discovered the, the, the former speaking of that day. We need to wake up. We have a translation of 1,300 throughout the year. What percentage of new convert do you have? Less than 5%. I did a, I did a flow chart, I did a bar chart, I did a pie chart. You know, you'll be able to see the picture very well. Parishes, I went to the port of parishes. I went out of the African church and said maybe it's because of that. And I went to Pentecostal. Ten churches outside the African African church. The same story. We rebel in church expansion membership. We are single, we are up to 100 today, we are up to 500 today. How many people are going to heaven? How many priests, pastors, and the kings, senior priests, how many members of your congregation are going to help? You are going to be asked questions. The bishop, the bishop may ask you here, yeah, that is earthly. Then when God asks you, what will you say to him? A call for evangelism. Let us pray. Hmm? Almighty Father, we thank you. We give you praise because you have given us the ability to win people into the kingdom. We have had your word. We receive grace to do so in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you. Jesus name.
be an extension of your grace to the world through these offerings. We ask Lord that you sanctify this up. That you sanctify all. All that this church, all that each and every one of us, Lord, will continue to need it. And use, Lord, even to propagate the gospel, these empires. Lord, release upon us like never before in the name of Jesus. Help us to be faithful, O God. Thank you, precious Father. Jesus, my name we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We are very pleased you are around us on this day, especially our Father in the Lord. The most reverend doctor, Gil Akimbewa, Baba, we thank you. And you are going to permit us, Baba, to do as the Spirit leads us. <laughs> and we're going to thank Baba too for coming. We are going to have our Thanksgiving now. And it's going to be in two folds. First of all, all one. We are going to make it one there. <laughs> Thank you. So while lyrics and choruses are going to be rendered by the indefatigable choir of our Savior's Anglican Church, IIT Environment, a beautiful choir, we are going to be led by the ushers. Ushers, so please direct. Lyrics and choruses, please.
thank you for giving us the grace to witness and we give you all the glory and honor, Father, accept our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we have brought the thanksgiving of your children. Pray, Father, that you accept in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are appreciating you for what you have done because it's marvelous in our sight. The grace to see this service today. Father, we thank you for all those who have contributed towards the completion of this church today. Thank you for all those who have contributed even at this service. Father, we pray that things of joy shall not depart from this diocese in the name of Jesus. Amen. If we are without to fulfill the commission you have given us through evangelism, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, precious Lord. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. I invite the PCC members and the Vicar of Christ in charge of this job to come forth. Most 
gracious God, whom the heavens of heavens cannot contain, graciously accept the dedication of this place to your service, and grant that all who shall call upon you here may worship you in spirit and in truth, and may their lives show forth your praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. May the Lord in his great mercy bless you all and give you understanding of his wisdom. May he nourish you with the riches of the Catholic faith and make you persevere in all good works. May he keep yourselves from wandering and direct you into the paths of love. And may the blessing of God Almighty. Son and Holy Spirit, we are upon you and remain with you and all that are yours this day and always. Professor E.B. Lucas, Baba Azania Kale, 
Church of Jesus. Mother's Union, we thank you, Convocation of Churches, and I want to thank my brother, the Venerable Dr. S.M.A. Faida. He is a wonderful man of the Lord. He's been on sabbatical, and yet he's always here. God has used him so very much for what we are witnessing today. And your wife, amiable wife too, may the good Lord bless and keep you in Jesus' name. Yeah. So members of our Savior's Anglican Church IT environment, if I please, can you stand there? May the good Lord bless you. It is the beginning of many things to come to your way in Jesus' name. Yeah. And before I close, I want to thank my uncle, my brother, our mentor too, the provost of the church, of the, of the provost of the cathedral, and provost of the diocese too. Thank you. My brother, Dick Priest, thank you. And I pray that things of joy like this we shall all witness in Jesus' name. So my brothers, Olugata, I thank you. You are wonderful. God bless and keep each and every one of you in Jesus' name. The room for Dara Dara by the any way behind our brother and our sister here have something for you. God bless you. We love you. Ah, brother is my brother. Thank you. Eh? Barista, eh? thank you. God bless you. We were probably even up to this afternoon. We were calling you. Thank you, choir. God bless you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty King. Hallelujah. 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 Just as I was sitting there, 
but want him to give me another 25,000. <laughs> Apart from the initial donation of 55 that he gave us in June, we thank you, mothers, grandmothers, it is well with you. Yeah. Enjoy at the yeah. But there is somebody here who, let me say, the beginning of this church was a uh, kind of identification to the family. Let me put it that way. Because if you look at the history of the church in your village, you see that it is a baby boy, they and they begin and just say that was being baptized and on that very day, Anglican members, the IITA and his ever decided to come together and form an Anglican church. And so Professor and Joseph, the mother of Adam is here from Lagos. <laughs> mother, you are welcome. God bless you, ma. Apart from the fact that Adam Bide, who is now in the US, study, sent 50,000 naira, mommy sent 500,000. How many more? Just two days ago. So thank you so much, ma. And to everybody that is here, we say thank you. My director, thank you so much. I thank you so much. I thank you so much. 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 You will please allow me to say some few words and uh, to start with to appreciate the preacher who had a very short notice to prepare for this message. I want to thank God that it's a heaven inspired message that we all need to be told the truth. Thank you very much, sir. The Lord continue to empower you day by day in Jesus' name. I'm glad that uh, that dissertation, that research, those truths that I need about the five five degrees, I want to have them to at least familiarize myself to strategize on what to do. And not only that, please, I now commission you do for all other degrees and bring it to me, okay? But if they say no, don't have you. <laughs> Thank you so much. The dignitaries, the clergy, I know how tough a day like this can be, energy-wise. You've been to services three, two, four. We thank you, the Lord will replenish your energy in the name of Jesus Christ. And uh, the Lord, thank you very much. In Jesus' name. A lot has been said, but it is true that it was the women of the convocation of churches that triggered up what was happening today. They are the ones that triggered it up. And the credit goes to them. They are wonderful people who obey their son who is a shepherd to say, come and do it here. And you okay? God is always in the habit of bringing beauty out of ashes. And it was God that directed you to come and evangelize. To come and help, God will bless you. Amen. Especially, Mama Guya, Mama Lauka, Mama Lauka, there is only one Mama Lauka in the convocation of service. And all you distinguished mamas. In fact, you are no longer mamas from today. You are young ladies. All of you. All of you are young ladies. God bless you. We will be Jesus of the day. Well, there is one by here. Well done. Well done. The work has just started. <laughs> because another work is coming. I apologize that we changed the date three times before we landed on this day. But it has come to show me that if I say bring a mountain down, you can do it. <laughs> so I thank you and your wife for you did a lot of German German. That's where we go. To labor to everywhere to look for money to bring about this beauty. The Lord will beautify your life. 
and you will never lack any good in Jesus' name. I Jamale literally brought Jericho to this church. Not only Jericho, he brought the money of Jericho here. I want to thank you for the sleeplessness and the way you went about cooperating with Mapaida. You and your wife, up to this afternoon, your wife came to presentize me in the palace. I thank you for all your efforts. Heaven will reward all of you in Jesus' name. Some of your children, you don't want them to be mentioned. They came sacrificially. Look at the floor. Look at the, the beauty that we are seeing. Yes, for most of your children, the Lord will reward them. Yes. They will travel in safety. Yes. They will walk in joy. Yes. And heaven will celebrate them yes. in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Well, they don't want to say it, I will say it. As a result of this, they are owing some money. Not less than 1.5. So please, we appeal to you, come to their aid. Apart from the fact that they are owing, there is something very fundamental that they should do. The fence of this compound should be raised. From my estimation, I don't know whether I'm wrong or right, engineer, it should not be less than 2,500 blocks and maybe 20 bags of cement. I don't know. But let's work on that. You want to give one bag of cement, uh, one block, two blocks, three blocks, feel free. And let us raise this fence to protect this edifice from vandalization. I beg you. We will do our own too, and I trust my provost, who is the uncle of Ajomale, he is going to do quite a lot. He will share on full of some. The Lord will help us and bless us as we do so in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, my mind and myself we are at St. Luke's, Uganda, where we conducted confirmation. The position of that church was like when this place had not been roofed, not plastered, and uh, not floored. So three things, the roof, the iron trusses, the plastering, the flooring, for it to, to exhibit a beauty as a church. I am trusting God that that will be the next church we will dedicate. Amen. And by this time next year we shall do it. Amen. I will come around to answer. I will come around. Little drops. Next question. This is not a matter for you to say no. Some of you are the chance of that. Some of you do it this year. I will come around. You will help me that we dedicate for Uganda and then move on from there to every other one. The house of the Lord must not be left that way. In the church. So please, like you helped, uh, please, I ask you now to come and help me. And you too must help me so that we can do that job that the Lord will be happy. It is at least two stage now. That is why they got stuck and stuck. So I pray that God will speak to you to help us. We cannot forget those who have worked before. People like Lake Akao, people like Oloka, people like Olukas. We thank God for your hands. I'm sure you are one of the happiest persons here today. Seeing how this God sees. The Lord will watch you mightily in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone who has supported, who has given, you will never suffer lack. Because the Lord never tells lies. He will reward every one of us appropriately in the name of Jesus Christ. I salute the boys brigade outside waiting for us. Salute you. Thank you very much. God bless your ministry in Jesus' name.
bless you, would you? Thank you. 